everybody it is cinnamon cooney your art sherpa and today is a really great live class this is a live painting class where i'm going to explain step by step how you could paint an ocean with artist knives uh sometimes you might have heard these referred to as palette knives um if john will show us a thing we're gonna be painting this wonderful little Ooh. seascape now this is an abstract seascape and the wonderful thing about abstract landscapes is is that we paint the essence of the landscape, but we don't have to paint the actual representational landscape. It lets things be a little bit forgiving, especially when you're learning a new skill. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's gonna help us in our little art adventure today by making sure you can see what the heck I'm doing by zooming in the camera and answering questions and also asking me questions because during live shows, I will answer questions uh, from the live chat feed. Uh, if you want to get them answered, the best thing to do is put them in caps. I am not ignoring anybody. Sometimes the chat goes real fast or I don't see everything that goes by. So if ever I miss a question, I'm super sorry, but we do try to catch as many as we can in the show. Today, we're going to be using uh, a really nice little set of traditional metal artist knives. You could use plastic here as well. I do mm -hmm. recommend the Art Sherpa plastic knives as they are a firmer less breaky plastic and sometimes having a, a little bit of different hand pressure is helpful with this type of thing so um it's something nice that you can get into i'm soaking one of these off i've got towels put aside you want to have a couple of towels that are paint rags put aside that way you can clean off the artist knife the other thing that i want to talk about is the type of paint so we said this yesterday but just in case you don't come every time i'm live um but you should you should totally come every time i'm live uh, this is Abstract Acrylic by Sennelier. Sennelier is a very old paint company and they make a fabulous professional brand of acrylic. And they also make this pouch brand. And I like this for artist knives because artist knives do tend to use more paint because we're painting in an impasto fashion. If John can zoom in close on the mm. canvas, you can kind of see the texture that we have there. Just get on in there. So this is a pretty thick, application of paint that there we're we using go. and that thick application does mean that we're using a little more paint one of the ways that we mitigate those costs especially while we're learning is picking the right student paint now artist loft and liquitex basics might not hold this much texture as they dry they might flatten a lot more that's called leveling nothing bad has happened nothing terrible and that's okay but if you'd like to keep that a level of body this is what i used to keep that these are very economical and they come in the handy dandy 500 milliliter size mm. <laughs> if you discovered that this was a ton of fun and they're super super per ounce the best deal i feel my personal opinion um i may actually turn that into a qualitative actually studied <laughs> mm. A measurement. I've also got some um, of the Sennelier uh, little liners. These are 3D liners. They squeeze out beads and dots of paint. I like to have them aside just in case I need them. I don't know. I need to be ready, ready for anything. I'm gonna put this aside as my reference. Um, today, I accidentally forgot to give John the reference. I'm super sorry. <laughs> it's okay. So, it's that day. Yay, us! Let's write a little wish or intention. I think since we're painting the ocean, we should wish uh, put a wish out there for the oceans. So let's wish that uh, the oceans are safe. Uh oh, I don't want to use that one. That is not a watercolor. Use this one. You want a watercolor when you do these. Safe oceans. And ocean life is safe. I don't know what that means. You know, I mean, I have a general idea. Sometimes I give these sort of more loose wishes simply because, um, I'm not one of those people that thinks I have the answer to every single thing. I'm really good at painting. I have a lot of painting answers. I'm a pretty educated person and well-read, but that still doesn't make me, you know, a marine biologist. <laughs> so I leave it to the marine biologist to tell me exactly what that could possibly mean. I put those little wishes out there, so whoosh, into the universe. Now, oceans. Whether you're painting a realistic waterscape or an abstracted waterscape if you have a horizon line of water you need to make that flat if it tips one way or the other it's not going to read as an oceanscape this becomes even more important when you're abstracting your oceanscape so i want to come up just a little bit below the halfway point like right around the third line point and i'm going to make a line i'm going to use a t-square to do it mm. this is going to help me have a level line no don was asking hi don 
Where are those paint pouches available? Oh my gosh, everywhere. On our they, website. Oh, that's right. We do also have them on our website. <laughs> <laughs> We're so bad at this. Like, okay. okay, so what it is, but you have to go to the Acrylic April store to stores. find the pouches. Two. In, huh? We have two stores right now. Yeah, we have two stores right now. There's the Art Sherpa store and there's the Acrylic April store. The Acrylic April store sells the paint pouches. It's a kit with my basic palette. Soon, so check. if you like painting with me, that's kind of convenient because it's the colors. It's worth checking both sites, but we're yeah. going to unite them soon. Yeah, because soon we're going to unite them. Websites, you want a little more. You know how that happens. I'll tell you exactly kind of where I end up making this line. So you, if you want to ex duplicate exactly, exactly what I have, you can do so. But you can see what this gives me is a straightish line. This is going to become really wonderful in a second. Now, I am going to show you a trick. So... Artist knives do create actually beautiful edged lines. Um, when you look here, I did manage to get some very nice lines. But a trick that I can do, because I'm going to paint the sky before I paint the water, is I can use a thing called Artist Tape. This particular brand is S-T-I-K-K. -K. Was sent to us. Any Artist Tape will work. Um, you can even use masking tape if you need to. Sometimes the canvas board will respond badly to some tapes I've heard. I haven't had that experience, mm. but I'm just letting you know people have shared that with me. And the thing is, is like you guys buy, you guys buy canvas boards from all over the world. Oh. Sometimes you have a very valid experience that is different than mine. Mm -hmm. Right? Doesn't mean it's not valid. Doesn't mean it's not true. It just means it's different than mine. And that's sometimes because I might be getting access to stuff that you don't have access to. Uh, so I see nice caps out there, Mod Cat Red. And uh, limited supply of Art Sherpa brushes here. We've got, yeah. We're, oh, we're, really? Yeah, we put in, so we figured out how to, how to do individual brush sales. So we bought these, it was mostly about shipping. So we bought these really cool shipping tubes mm -hmm. so that we can pack safely individual brushes. And the oh, heads so they don't, don't come jacked up to people? Right. So we spend, that's the cat, part Which of, brushes are up there? Um, so we have plenty of cat's tongues. Do you need a cat's tongue? It seems we have some. Um, we have uh, a very limited number of fans, clouds, and other brushes that are just okay. sparsely. But we're going to be getting more and more stuff in because okay. we're building more project kits. We have more book projects right. with projects. Well, guys, stuff. go check out the store. I didn't even know it was up on my store. I, it, John does a lot of stuff on the store that I don't see. Well, we don't tell her everything because we're not ready Don't yet. tell me everything. Now, this knife set is in the description. There are two sets. There's probably a set of the Art Sherpa knives on the store. No, we don't have any in stock. Oh, we're out. We're out. Okay, so this is $8 <laughs> on Amazon. Please don't spend more than but, $8 on the set of knives, please. And you may also be able to find the Art Sherpa knives mm -hmm. on there as well. Yeah, the, the Art Sherpa knives are probably on Amazon. Yeah. And they're, they're really actually cool. They are super cool. They're pretty good. Now, we're going to start out, and we're going to put out some paint here, and I'm going to show you how to load. I'm going to show you how to make marks, and I'm going to show you how we create this. The first thing is we've got this very bright kind of lower yellow uh, area. And so I'm going to get my primary yellow. Let's start with a primary, primary yellow. That seems like a lovely color. It is a lovely color. It is a lovely color. Painting sunsets is always fun. I'm going to put out a nice ample amount of primary yellow. I'm going to also put out some of our primary red. By the way, primary uh, yellow is really essentially Hansa yellow. Or cad yellow medium, same same thing. Okay, so same thing. interesting question. Primary red is going to be like naphthol red medium or red medium. Let's say that you watched an art sherpa video and you got super excited and you <laughs> and you went out and you bought some heavy gel medium. Oh, wonderful! It will build up the paint and extend your paint. But let's say you have not yet upgraded all of your paint. It's fine. It'll work in student paint. I'm making a video right now, like things that beginners are never told but they should know. Student paint and pro paint works together just fine. Mm -hmm. It all no. works together. You never have to. You do, uh, even the golden opens work with other acrylics. Big caveat. Oils and acrylics don't work together. Must be a good quality product. We can't guarantee. There are a lot of overseas products that are coming out with manufacturers that are kind of new and don't abide by the same standards. So caveat being traditional Stuff art. you find in Michael's. Yes. Stuff and you find in Michael's going to be fine. All fine. All yep. the stuff. All the acrylic stuff. Even over there in the craft aisle. Comes over. Yeah, the in fact, paint, if you're a crafter fine. and you've been spending like a junk of money for gesso over on the craft aisle, walk over to the art aisle and get a big tub. Same money. Now I'm going to put out some orange. I'll tell you which color this is. 
really like this color. This is red orange pouch 640. We'll also be mixing some oranges. I just found that this was really nice in this particular sunset to do. I have some colors out. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to uh, kind of scrape out and I'm going to probably take this up pretty far, a very light yellow orange. I'm going to take my white and a little of my yellow. And we're going to do this, this first application differently than we did yesterday. So yesterday we applied pretty thickly. But today, we're going to do a scraped, pretty thin application. Mm. See how I'm just scraping that along? I hear the scrapiness. So this scrapiness is where I'm taking uh, paint and making it go as far as possible. I'm trying to catch So we're applying that, that first layer of the paint, making that go as far as possible. We're starting with this light yellow, which is the primary yellow. And so yellow, cad yellow, mm. will work and a little white. I'm gonna come here, and you see I just come from that little paint pop, get my plops, mix them together, and paint them out. Ooh, so Dana got a pack of, um, I think I know which pack it is, it's the four, I think it's, it's a four piece sampler with all the different kinds of golden uh, products in it. Oh, wonderful. And uh, in it, it had light modeling paste. Oh, have flat, that stuff is fantastic. As a matter of fact, I think I have that box here. With the four pack sample. Yeah. So you should come out and talk about that at some point. Like what is modeling paste? Can how do you use it? You know, I think oh wait, no, we did stucco. Oh, yeah. here's what. I did um moderator cad red in the big art quest. We did a video about paste, paste. and gels and things like that. And we covered like every product because it's like an hour and I, and next time I do it, I'm going to bookmark, <laughs> mm. I'm going to bookmark and make it a little easier, the chapter marking. So you can go through a big video like that and find the info that you need in short order. They didn't have that option. I don't think, or I didn't know how to use that option. Now I went a little dark on my yellow and that is fine. Hear the scrapes? Yes, I do. Either that's wonderful or horrible for you. Let me know in the comments. Scrapey noise, love scrapey, it. Scrapey, scrapey. Is that almost ASMR? Scrapey, scrapey. Scrapey, scrapey. I like that scrapey. It's a nice. I'm like only being quiet so you guys can enjoy the scrape, just in case you're enjoying the scrape. You have to, you have to lean down to the scrape because I have to, I have, I have you. Sorry. There's a lot of, no, no, it's okay. I've just got to make sure we, um, so. Oh, you can't hear the scrape? Yeah, no, not unless my oh, mic unless is I'm leaned. Oh, I thought you were saying don't lean down. So. Okay, well, there's the scrapey scrapey if you hear it. It's very loud in the space with me. I'm trying to adjust up. So. When I'm putting this out, guys, my knife is pretty flat to the surface, but the weight, the weight of my stroke when I'm scraping out is to the right edge. So it's pretty flat, but I have a slightly greater weight on the right edge. That's not something you necessarily can see from a camera. So it's something that I've got to tell you about so you know that's going on there. The scrape is coming out, and the weight of the scrape is at the right edge. See how that's moving paint? And that's how we get uh, the entire surface covered with that lovely bit of yellow. Now, yesterday we did not, but today, oh, we're going to dry that layer. All right. And John will talk to you about all the shifties of colors. I will. So, yep, you're not supposed to use heat when you're drying your acrylic paint because it is a uh, acrylic polymer, which is... Um, responsive to heat so that can cause things like color shift shrinkage and other adherence things mostly in your student and and overseas uh very imp you know the the low quality paints in your name brand paints you're not going to see this issue is quite quite as much um so not something you have to worry about there knocking things over left and right all right that's me knocking things over left and right might even need my coffee microwave soon. Mm. What is going on with me today? I don't Happy know. Saturday. A lovely day. How you guys doing? Good. Shifty paint. Heat talks, says Patty Hoffman. All right, beautifuls. So we're going to come in here and we're going to start putting in our clouds and our sunset. 
Now we have some kind of low oranges and then there's this blue that builds up. This might even need a little more dry. I think it's pretty mm. good. There's a blue that builds up here and then it comes down into the oranges. And this is going to be about how we layer the paint with a palette knife. All about that. So first, let's start out with. Oh, I'm going to show you something. See this bend here? Can you see the slight bend? Yeah, I can see the slight bend. Okay. So that is what is different between an Italian uh, palette knife or a good Japanese palette knife. And the eight dollar palette knives is that you get a slight bend in them. To be really honest, for the type of work we're doing here, that wouldn't be a problem for you. Just know that that's not uncommon on the less expensive knives. Mm -hmm. right. Come in here now. Let's put in some like low grade sunset stuff going on, right? Yeah. Now here is where we're going to imply that our sun is. So that's going to be maybe our lightest area. And I'm going to take a little yellow and create. I'm just almost on the toe here. Mm -hmm. Letting the knife create my little cloud forms. These are same and yet somewhat different every time. This is very yellow on yellow. Very yellow on yellow. Very yellow on yellow. And then it's going to be orange on yellow. And then it'll be some red on yellow. Now I'm going to have a nice orange bank at the base. Now I'm, I'm loading the opposite direction guys. So most of the time you see me scraping to the right to load. I'm going to scrape to the left to load. Ooh, hold on a second. Let me go back over there. When I want to create that cracking, I take the angle and flatten it out. So hold most on. of the work is done on this little angle, but when I want to create that cracking in the paint, I might take the paint and flatten it out. Hmm. Got some nice values. Let's get into some orange. I'm going to take this orange and mix it into my yellow. If you don't have any orange, you could use just a tiny bit of red. And a little of that orange yellow here, kind of coming around the zone that we know will be the sun. And you see how this is breaking up? Mm hmm That's the little journey. What was that noise? That was a screen door slamming. And that was someone's Alexa talking to me. Are you sure it's not one of the spiders robots? Oh, who keeps changing Alexa to the sexy male voice? <laughs> <laughs> we have somebody in the house who keeps changing Alexa's sexy male voice. And it isn't me. Yeah, John to Samuel Jackson, which I think is super funny. And no, we are not secretly being sponsored by Amazon. We just have one of those crazy things. Mostly so we have an intercom. I'm kind of pulling this here. I'm just taking the orange and you see kind of layering this out. I'm allowing things to exist in these spaces. And I'll have when John comes back in, I will have him. Uh, come in and really uh, zoom in on some of this. Let's take this right here. Pull that across. Maybe a little more. A little yellow into it. This one I got maybe a little more yellow. And you can see how those mixes sort of become, well, really artful, in my opinion. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to wipe off as you do and maybe pull some more yellow back into this up here as I'm coming up. That's looking good. Yeah. So see, we have this sort of abstracted thing. Now, can you kind of get in here? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you can pick up over here. You see this knife work that's still showing here. I'm going to get in on the knife work. You can see it. Okay. So that's what you're kind of trying to go for is these little broken bits or edges that are going on. Let's put out some like, of our cloud color. I'm going to take oh, a primary blue. Ah, see, sometimes it's hard for my camera to hunt for the focus when it's that close up on those colors that are so close. Take a primary blue and I'm going to take a purple. And we're going to make some up tall sort of clouds going on. 
These initially will be quite dark and then we'll lighten them. So let's take a little of our purple and a little of our blue and we'll loosely mix them together. I want it to bias more to the blue than the purple. Let's bring some of that down. You see how this is just a deep, deep coloring. Oh, that was nice right there. Mm -hmm. Pay attention cool. for these really wonderful little purple moments where you're like, oh, that's that's fun. And then you're like, oh, I like that. Bringing this down. Just moving along, loading the knife. Oh, the great penguin is helping on the night shift at work. Looking brilliant so far. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Let's keep pulling that down. So we do want to cover the surface underneath. It's okay if a little bit of it peeks out. We're not unhappy with that. We're gonna want to really make this upper part of the sky darker. Pulling this into the orange. Now you've gotta be careful when you're coming forward into the orange so that you don't pick it up. And we're keeping most of this dark value up here. Make sure it goes right to the edge of the surface, right? We don't want it to come out. Now remember you can go back the opposite way, right? So you can go forward and you can go back. There are two directions you can go to move the paint. Right? And hopefully John is catching mm -hmm. the angle of my knife to the surface. You guys can kind of catch that. Now in a little bit here, we're gonna start thickening up our application of paint. See how it picked up some of the yellows? So that's just something to watch for. Maybe I'll come like that. Pretty good application of the paint. Putting in a little more blue. And I will, I've got some white out there. I may put out a little hmm. more purple. Hmm? Hmm, always means something oh, for you. I was just reading this. Uh, so d a couple things. Darcy said, she just wanted to say thank, thank you. She appreciated this class, these classes a lot. You and, are so welcome. And Don was asking, is there a certain kind of tape that you need to put on cracked handles? And I was, I would let you answer that because that's really a tool question. And I know you have that problem in your tool shed too. Yeah. There's some better. There's better stuff at Harbor Freight, you know? Yeah, in general, um, a cracked handle should be glued with wood glue and allowed to dry, and it will be stronger than the um, than the actual break. But you probably need to clamp it with a C-clamp yeah. to hold or, the crack together, don't you? Yeah, you should. The other thing you can do is when you put the glue in there, grab a piece of dental floss and wrap it around there a whole bunch of times like a splint, That'll hold it together really tightly. I'm gonna get a little white mixed into here loosely. And sometimes the, the the dental floss might even get attached, but you can just cut it off with a little razor or something. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm also, gonna add just a smidge of white, guys. We're getting some of these clouds in. First layer of our clouds. And remember, we gotta we gotta keep it kind of dark up in the corners. My pressure now is quite light. I'm skipping over the dark paint that's underneath. Mm -hmm. so this is an area that might catch somebody that's new about not understanding how the paint goes out. And if you're watching, you know, piano videos. Piano? <laughs> you know, Why would the you palette watch? knife piano videos where oh. they, you know, paint with a palette knife and there's piano music in the background. But those I'm are very soothing. Little, they're super soothing, but they might not always in the demo show you what's happening. No. Not for any malicious well, no, reasons, just, no, just like different goals. We're yeah. going to continue to kind of pull this down here. As we get to the space between these two, these colors will sort of lighten up transitionally. You can see that you use this. It's a lot like I'm gonna be honest, there's a lot in common with just making a peanut butter jelly sandwich here. Mm. 
if you've made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you've ever had the white bread tear up, you kind of know your struggle. <laughs> mm. And you will have some of that struggle here, and that's okay. I'm a sourdough bread person. Yes, he, he is a sourdough so, bread person. I like my fermented bread. I can come back in with the toe of my knife and make adjustments to the aspects of the clouds that I'm trying to get in. If you're looking at yours and you're saying to yourself, I don't know where the clouds are. <laughs> in abstract landscape painting, it takes a minute to see the abstract. It's about the totality of value and color and line and form and the way your brain interprets those things for the abstract to come together. So try to be very easy with yourself as you're learning this skill. It just takes a second. You can do this. I'm going to take a little of my white and some of my blue, make a very nice light color. Nice light color. And I'm going to take this beautiful, nice light color. I'm going to start to create the transition between the deep cloud line and the nice fiery orange cloud line. Mm. A little more white can come out here. Oh, there we go. Your pocket in there. Mary's a sourdough person too. I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's lots of sourdough people in there. Well, of course I'm there are. Alone. Sourdough is wonderful. Wow. Get this nice white paint. Now you can zhuzh it up with a little bit of yellow. That kind of takes it into a turquoise. It's kind of nice, especially where you're coming here. Mm. We're just getting this in here and we're working it. Now, we're going to do some skipping. Skipping is where I allow the paint to capture some of the paint underneath it and it creates some kind of unexpected shapes. Mm. It's wonderful in the process of what we're doing. The trick with it will be is to not take away all of the deep work that you've done because you'll need that deep value for things to feel like what they are. I'm going to take a lot, uh, maybe a little yellow into that. And kind of see that goes quite turquoise. I'm going to come over here. It's a nice transition when it's moving down to the sunnier area of the skyscape. And I don't necessarily pull out every pop of yellow, everything that's going on. Wipe off. Wipe off. As I'm going, there's some uh, really cool purple that you're definitely going to want to get involved into this mess. So I'm going to pull out some white over here and get a little of my purple. I definitely want this to feel like purple. I'm going to come right here with this light kind of value purple. I'm going to stroke that down strongly and I'm thinking of the purple. There we go. That's a nice touch there. Because in a sunset, sometimes purple is like, it's really present, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We'll be coming back into our purple mix again, a couple of places. Right now, we're just trying to make sure that there's pops of that going on in our sunset. Pops of purple. Pops of purple. Right, put one there just to be, to be cheeky. Mm. I have a wonderful transition color. Sometimes when you're going, and I don't know if I have too much stuff in the way. No, I can see it down on that. Okay. But I'll right see. here... As you're going, if your pressure's heavier, you'll pick up what's underneath in it. Mm. I like to sort of leave that be. Yeah, I that do. little blend. 
yeah, I like to let it blend. I like to let it be. I like to let it have its little moment. No. I'm going to get my more kind of diamond headed trowel. It's a little bit longer than my teeny diamond head. Um, the crank on this is really nice. When you're looking for a palette knife, you want a crank that lets you work without just being in the paint. Mm -hmm. If the crank is too shallow, what happens is your knuckles will be dragging through the paint all the time. It will super annoy you. I'm going to take a little of my red here and some of this wonderful orange. I'm going to mix them together. Start to get into some of these orangier colors. Oh, that's nice. And let's come here and say, right here, and we're going to say, oh, there's a little bit of maybe orange that picked up on that cloud there. Because that's what they'll do. Orange will start to pick up the clouds. Now, during this, you may need to wipe off and then reload. We're going to start to put some of the fire of the sunset on the surface. You can see how the layering is kind of critical now. Yeah. That got a little bit redder. Colors around the sun will be warmer in colors as they transition out. So you want to have your fire mostly focused in this space and then go into kind of a warm lavender or more of your purples as it goes out. Kind of a yellow, orange, red. I'm just getting that fiery fire red. Here's the load. Here's the bead. Right there, you ready? Mm hmm. Touching, touching. Building up those clouds. When it starts to mix like that, then I'm going to come over here and wipe off. I can always reload it. Yeah. Maybe drop it a couple places of transitional stuff, and then I'm into here. Ooh. How are you guys enjoying this today? Very much so. I'm so glad. There's lots of chats happening. Is there lots of chats? Mm -hmm. Well, if you like what you see, guys, please comment after the video, like the video, and subscribe to the channel if you'd like more free art content. We're coming up on a week of live every day from the 1st of November to the 7th of November with the option to extend <laughs> if stuff stays stressful. Like, if we come to the seventh day, we're like, yeah, I can't take it anymore. We're just going to keep hitting. That's it's right. going to go, uh, it's going to alternate between acrylic and watercolor. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Continue to pull this, like, orangey red down. Especially in that transitional space between these two colors. Really enjoying that. And it's okay when the green or something gets in there. I don't stress about it because one, I can come in here with something and go to just right over it if I need to. Okay? And sometimes if you go back, it will take it away. You can also kind of touch and hide some things when you need to. If you need to, you may not need to. You may be like, no, I got it. Good. Bring some of that down. I need some more yellow. This is the primary yellow. What's the primary yellow equivalent to? It's a yellow, cad yellow, something like that. Mm. <laughs> Paul was like, yes, an option to extend. <laughs> and Tom's like, gratitude week. 2020 has been hard on my gratitude work. I've, I've really had to work hard to find my gratitude now, moments. Is this seven days on YouTube or Facebook? Well, Tom and I are talking about letting it stream to both. Mm -hmm. we, if if we can pull it off, we'd like to let it be both. That way you guys can figure out where your best viewing is, your best connection is, because sometimes it works better on one than the other. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to try to do both. Fingers crossed. For sure YouTube. Possibly both. Possibly. Possibly. Maybe. Now as I come closer to the center area right there, I'm going to, I want it to be orange, but I definitely want more yellow. In that space, I can pick up some of the color that we have, but I just want to make sure that those oranges are warmer. Mm -hmm. can even get some of the red into it here.
just playing. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? And I say the word playing a lot. And the reason I say playing, get more into the reds as we move out. The reason that I kind of refer to this always, a little red there, a little red cloud, but it is to me, a little red cloud. Let's see what was the question over here. I'm going to get a little more red into this mix here. Kind of just some, some proper red. A couple of places. I see how that cloud system is sort of working there. Yeah, coming is up from the, oh, sorry. There was a question? And it's okay to switch back and forth between palette knives for different effects? Yes, and I highly recommend it. If you have a shape of knife that isn't getting you where you need to go, I highly recommend you switch it. Gotcha. I'm going to make a bright orange. I have loaded to the left side of the knife. I'm making a lower ocean cloud bank. You know how they are where they have those like low clouds? Lower ocean cloud bank. Maybe a little more yellow as it comes forward. Just enjoy this. The same, here's something else. When you're painting an abstract landscape, it will help you learn ab, uh, landscape principles because even though you're being abstracted, you still have to have the things that are required for your brain to go, that is a landscape. I know what that is. That's a little more uh, red than I wanted. So I'm going to come back here. When I did that. I just kind of was like, no, I want you more orange. I didn't want you to be that. Whenever you need just some pure pigment, you can come in with the pure pigment of your knife and you're kind of pulling in this yellow center, right? Because that's where that focus is going to be. Oops. I'm going to swoop this right here, kind of maybe talking a little bit about cloud bank. It's fussiness, but you got to love it. Now I'm going to take a little of this red here, this primary red. Get it into my purple. Um, now, CAD Red Medium won't make a nice purple. So you may uh, want to change uh, your red to a magenta uh, for this part if you don't have a primary based red. Because now, in this case, because we're mixing these two, the bias of the color is going to come into play. Get a little of my white into that to sort of reveal that, that pinkish kind of value. Oh, there you see it, right? Mm. Maybe these clouds are a little more wispy and long. And I'm okay with that. I don't mind it. A little bit of a grouping here we're going to talk about a little bit down there, a little low, a little grouping. Put some weight into this. Now this we can kind of warm with a little bit of yellow, interestingly enough, kind of pink. Mm -hmm. We're going to come here and maybe we're going to talk about a little grouping of Clouds there. You can kind of see that I'm pulling, I'm making like a little little curve and pull stroke. I'm talking about those clouds and that sort of, shh, shh, shh. you know how they get. Yeah. You know how they get. You know how they be. If it's lighter, I want to have it be along the edges that might be more exposed to the sun. If it's darker, I might want to put it more to the outside edges. Oh, so fun. There we go. And we're wow. still pulling it all together. Take a look at that. 
starting to be what it is, mm -hmm. right? Where are we going? We're heading this direction. That's where we're going. Sometimes it's hard to see where you're going. Now we have some purples and I did this purple. Yeah, it had, it has, uh, you know, a little bit of the red in it, but it had a little bit of the blue because I wanted it to be a cooler purple. We do want it to be purple, but I need it to be this cooler purple. And the reason being, and I'm going to load it up where it's kind of to the edge the toe of this. We're going to make some darker little cloud banks. Those sort of like backlit little clouds that tend to get dark. Mm hmm right on the edge there you can kind of work those out yeah hmm got a bit of that there just for balance working on it little sweepies those are fun little sweepies i still need some more down low orange I'm going to kind of come here and bring that little orange in. And I'm going to get some of this brighter orange and take it up as a low cloud bank. That's pretty good. A little more pink than that. There we go. You see, I can just change your mind right in the middle of the process. That's looking pretty good. Center yeah. area. Pull out a bunch of my white, a little of my yellow. A little more yellow than that. There you go. But it's a light yellow. I'm coming through here. going there I like that so when we're all the way here if we're happy with the expression of our sunset if we're like yeah that that is expressing as a sunset to me i feel like my canvas is identifying very sunsetty one nice touch is to kind of come in maybe with a little white and blue very light color if it's turquoise it's even better mm. go ahead and touch the tops of some of the red with that this is a little bit of a delicate touch that you got to kind of master To kind of imply okay. that space happening there. Mm, nice. Do, 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 do. Yes, and I did use a reference when I painted this. So this is actually based on a sunset. Hmm. And that's a good thing to do is to sometimes look at a reference and go, you know, what do I need to do to, you know, get this effect? Because no matter what else you've got going on, you're going to get into it and you're going to be able to represent what you're seeing much better because you'll be noticing things like, oh, the clouds are lying in orange this way. That's darker up here. It's got, you know, these values and these things. I'm going to take white, just pure white. Make a little. Uh, right here. That'll be really on the toe of your brush, on the toe of your artist knife. I need to be a perfect round, but round ish. There you go. Sun. 
think I put this on a, on a Instagram to ask if you guys wanted to do it. All right, are we ready to peel? Okay. Let's get in. Let's get into the peel. You want to okay. get up close and follow the peel. Everybody loves the peel. It's so relaxing to them. You guys ready for a relaxing tape peel away? Everybody loves a tape peel away. Oh, that felt good. <laughs> there you go. There's your weekend. There you, there's your weekend peel away. And I think at this point, you guys are probably seeing the sunset happening here. Mm -hmm. you're, you're recognizing, oh, there's some sunset going on. Now I'm going to put out some green and some blue. Yeah, everything here seems very wet. It's wet. It's very wet. wet. Yeah. Hey, can we microwave my coffee? Yeah, we can. We totally could. Are you, 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 want me, you want me to go do it? Yeah. That's what you're saying. Huh? You're saying what you want me to do is go microwave it. Then. Yeah, that's, I was. You might want to take those earphones off so that cable doesn't, doesn't end you. <laughs> so right. here we go. I see uh, Lindsay uh, I, uh, is asking about the hummingbird. Uh, hopefully the videos I sent on painting a hummingbird were helpful um, in, in your hummingbird journey. Uh, William Shatner played Professor Beard and Susan Day played Joe. Hmm. PB15. Hi, Thalo. So when you're doing this, the hardest parts of this is that there are elements that initially feel a little out of your control. Um, it, the brush gives you the sense of being in control um, in a real specific way, and sometimes the knife doesn't necessarily impart that sense of control to you. But actually, if you step back from it just a little and just kind of get a little mental about it, so you're just making a mark. That's all you're doing is you're making a mark. You're mixing colors and you're making a mark and those things will, uh, through this process, kind of create a scenario where cumulatively that aspect of landscape starts to come together. Um, your goal isn't to capture the landscape necessarily as it is though with palette knife painting you can paint actually pretty figuratively uh the goal with an abstracted landscape is to capture the feeling the moment a breath between moments in, in it right so it's not just capturing what the clouds are doing and the way light is reflecting on the water or the way the sun is shining or the positioning of objects to in relationship to each other but the real goal is to say what was happening in that moment and how did that feel uh, to me, right? So sometimes when I'm out there and I'm even at a landscape and I'm just sitting outside and I'm painting, but I'm painting abstracted. Uh, uh, when I'm painting abstracted landscapes, um, I try to think about the moments between moments. So John is back. Uh, Dana, is it normal for a strong odor from your paints? My titanium white does. So Dana, I have never noticed a strong odor from my titanium white paint. I have noticed strong odors from mediums and certain specialty products like Golden's Varnish has got a lot of, for me, it's great varnish. It's great, but I, I will pick up on that. But I do hear that and I... And what I'm going to tell you is acrylic paint is a petrochemical. It's an acrylic polymer plastic, right? So there's different formulations. Every company kind of has a different personality around it. Uh, every company has a different relationship to the environment. And so it is entirely possible to me that some lines of paint could smell. I would probably switch paints because I would perceive that as dangerous, but that doesn't mean that there is any actual VOCs coming off the paint, right? It could just be that they used a particularly odorous formulation for their acrylic formulation. You know, you've got a source of polymer and you had to add surfacants and sulfacants and many other things to create an emulsion that will suspend these pigment particles predictably. It's a thing with acrylic. So if it's smelling, I would take the time to email the company and be like, hey, 
My paint is smelling. Did you mean for two? And if they're like, yeah, some people notice an odor, then you're okay. If they're like, there should be no odor, I would exchange that tube of paint. Mm -hmm. um, I'm interested to know the brand, though. Uh, Christine Gray Wolf says the casein in the paint can sour. Um, I'm not sure. Not all acrylic paints, I think, have casein, but yes. Yeah, you're at most. So here's the thing. In general, your acrylic paint should be devoid of active organic compounds. Yeah, I'm never. Now, I, I use a really good paint, though. I'm, there's like no smell here. It's a synthetic polymer base, and all of the organic material should be rendered inert or i.e. dead before it's put in that tube. And no, <laughs> no, no fermenting, green. no weird smell growth, no molding <laughs> should happen. So this is, again, why we stand behind a lot of the... Uh, the larger paint companies that have a reputation for using good chemistry that protect their consumer base. Yeah. There are, there are less scrupulous companies out there. And so we only use product on the show that we have a high confidence that you can talk to as a consumer and get support for. They follow, you know, standards of. Now there, um, there are safety. paints though that have a base of, Case in like temporary water based sure. paints like tempers and stuff like sure. that. Because it's really a milk protein, right? And like on a, mm -hmm. isn't that on the basic level? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's an organic, but yeah. even and your And so organic that could go off. But your gesso, however, can mold mm -hmm. for sure. You got to watch that. I'm going to start putting down my dark blue. And then we're going to keep going while John explains some things to watch for on the paint and molding. No, that's what I think. No, 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 that's it. important. People, people need to think about it, making my dark, dark blue. I generally like use a paint company that has a tech support group I can reach and is, you know, uh, there's a company behind who I'm using the product above. Yeah. You know? So if anything crazy like that happens, you know, I've got somebody to reach. In fact, uh, <laughs> Golden has been nice in the years before I was even the Archerpa, and they have answered questions not only about their paint products, but acrylic paint products in general. Some paint companies, uh, Royal Talons, uh, Sennelier, are a uh, whole bunch. They're very consumer-based. Deco, believe it or not. Modge Podge, believe it or not. I've been, yeah. Which is Plaid, have, have customer lines. It doesn't mean, you know, it's just if they're willing to talk to their customers, they're sort of willing to stand by the product, aren't they? Generally speaking, yeah. You know, it's... Uh... We all endorse companies with our purchase. And right. so we I, do. And I, I like to buy from companies that carry on activities that I like to endorse. Right. And so good consumer safety practices is one of those big ones. So if it's got safety labels on the, la on the outside of it, it's got clear indication of how to get support, probably a good thing. Yeah. And it isn't just one company. I'm just doing a kind of controlled scraping method, mm -hmm. but it's still just a scraping method. Just getting the canvas down here with the basis of this dark blue. And that's going to help us when we come to do, you know, other stuff here. Now, as I'm going to go through, I'm going to start putting in some of my ocean. I'm going to make, make some of my, my blue and purple. And I'm going to come through here. And the motion is kind of a pull. Yeah. And it's going to create a little bit of a little bit of a body. I'm working this mostly on the outside, but you know, it could be on the center. I am, however, trying to make sure that uh, I don't get too much angled because I'm trying to keep that sense of water. So, uh, Take your paint supplies seriously, though, guys. Um, I think being self-trained is as viable in merit, right? It's as meritous in the quality of art as, say, being studio trained in, uh, in a university. Yep. What you guys do tend to miss in self-education is studio safety and understanding of the material. Material science is not as readily available to you or necessarily community encouraged as it should be. And um, because 
in the self-educated art world, right? Yeah. There isn't any kind of accreditation or anything. Anybody out there can say any old thing they want. I made a boo-boo. Now, I'm this is interesting. I know the answer to this question. Mm, that answer. Um, gloss. Huh? Gloss. Yes. That's the answer. Okay, gloss. Would you like the question? Yes, I'd like the question. It's like, so, does the art Sherpa prefer gloss or satin glazing liquid? Gloss. He's right. He does know the answer. For 200, I do, Alex. I, I feel like, um, look, this is experiential. This here is anecdotal. And I always try to tell you if my opinion's anecdotal or if it's based in something more substantive. This opinion here I'm about to give you, this is more purple on this one. And I'm just making these little strokes out because I want the outer part of my ocean to be a little darker as I'm going. Um, is there's less drag on the brush with the gloss than there is with the just tapping and pulling, kind of starting to create that texture of paint. Uh, less drag on the brush. Anecdotally, I will tell you that is my opinion of what is happening to me in that in there. And I felt like the satin had more of a drag. And I'm sure mm -hmm. if I sat down with the people at Golden and told them that, they would look at me like I just dropped out of an alien spaceship and was completely crazy. So there's a question here from mm -hmm. Stephanie about Liquitex paints changing consistency. <laughs> and yeah. what I would say is that... There's a reason they're not on my recommended list. And check the manufacture date of your tube. I believe they just changed over to having a new production process around their paint. And I've not heard anything about it yet, but I'm interested. Yes. Um, so Liquitex is a company that has changed hands a multitude of times. Um, hopefully this new, this new transition will fix some of the issues that were happening from the last transition. Now keep in mind. Mm -hmm. I've not talked to anyone at Liquitex, so they've not like officially yeah. sent me. There's the, nothing official. We're is... just hopeful. We're just behind the scenes in you. The we're rumor basically, mill. we're spilling some tea. We were the, hanging out. The tea is that there may be a new sheriff in town. Over at the water cooler at the paint station. Yeah. And we overheard. We overheard that that's a possibility, but it isn't confirmed. Yep. It is not a confirmed rumor. But you guys will know first, so let us know. Let us know. Um. If anything isn't as it should be, return it. Yeah, generally speaking, if it's not the way you expected it to be, it's probably wrong. So return it. Just return it. It's not your problem. Right. You bought a product that was designed to do what they promised, which is paint. That includes our stuff. If you buy a brush oh, yeah, and it isn't sure. good, return it. It's not your problem. Mm -hmm. Support at theartsherpa.com. We are here for you. Yeah. We're, we're to the people who make it, Silver Brush Limited. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, but because we don't if, make the brushes, they no, make no. the brushes. But if, if, the, if you're not being treated well by anybody, Teespring, anybody, you write us because yeah. it's we don't consider this your problem. No, we'll help you. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to take a little of my green and blue, making my favorite color, which you guys are familiar with, which is Thalo Turquoise. So this is Thalo Green. And on the abstract acrylic, this is the primary blue, 385, but it's really Thalo Blue. And I'm going to add just a smidge. Of white so we can start to see this color I have got my long nosed palette knife here and I'm going to start adding some of these little just any waves these are little waves this is a touch and pull I need more white I'll pull it in there there we go I may switch back to my big nose. I don't like this one as much on this technique. I'm just saying. How I feel. So. Take this one. I'll try this one for a bit. Raheel ask a, a good question. There we go. This is a good bead. I like this bead the best. I appreciate it. It's meant with lots of heart. It's a good question. Okay. So if you're under 18, can you patron the Sherpa? <sighs> I don't believe so. You would have to have a grown-up do yeah. it, right, to sign up. Um, and uh, the group that we have, the patron group, is 18 plus because there are nudes and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, we so, have a family membership. It's an all-family membership. We encourage you to talk to your parent 
or yeah. guardian. Oh my gosh, and but them. straight up, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the thought, the love. We appreciate you. If you know you're, uh, you, if you have any, you know, feel free to, to email support at theartsherpa.com, and we'll do for everything we can. For any questions, we'll yeah. help you in any way that we can. Like if you're wanting to get on the Zoom classes or yeah. or something. So here's what it, we are very cognizant. You're probably a very savvy person, mm -hmm. right? But I'm one of the few adults that has some idea of what TikTok actually is. So, <laughs> right? Yeah. I actually know what's going on in Instagram. I know that there are subset communities on both of those platforms. All of that, I got teen kids. So I understand what you're up against. A yeah. unique set of challenges that no generation before has ever had to face. I think you guys are amazing. But that said, because of that, um, I just try to be careful with people under 18 as I would want people to be careful with my own kids. Um, so if you want to do something patron, just email us and, and we just want to make sure parents are aware and everything is there. We are a safe space. We're a family safe space. But even so, we come from video games. Yeah. Where uh, you actually weren't allowed to target kids. <laughs> yeah, we, we really try to make sure we abide by all the safety rules for internet mm -hmm. safety for you guys as well. Because so. we want you to learn art, but I'm here for you. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, if you ever need, like, help getting your portfolio together for college, I used to do that consulting. So, like, I have some knowledge. Yeah. I have some know-how. A bunch of people are like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a lot of opinions on art school. Now, there is a kind of grouping of waves that kind of comes forward up here and will come back that way a bit. It has a bit of an angle, so I'm going to try to capture that now so I don't lose it as I'm sort of painting. How we get that is really about when I come back with the dark, there's sort of a balancing space. Now we're trying to talk about some little waves going across. Little waves going across. Yeah, I actually um, am a huge fan of uh, the younger generation. I'm really impressed. Just am. Um, I, I think these kids are incredible. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh! Did you see that 14 year old that just found that protein from the coronavirus? Oh yeah. That may be involved with the cure. This generation, the alphas, the Z's. They can do this. Mm -hmm. You guys, you have no idea how incredible they are. They are amazing. I am in awe. You know, I feel like we laid the groundwork because we warned them about Skynet, but <laughs> I'm in awe. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to us. You know, I think you guys are going to save the planet. I think you guys are going to um, save society. Really make a better world for everybody. I think you guys are going to figure out a lot of stuff about how we relate to each other online. Now, as I come through here, I'm going to level out kind of a little bit through here. Mm -hmm. And then just keep going. Got a little green in it. Yeah, I, I know I'm gushing, but I just really am impressed with, with the younger generation. It's just like every time I see stuff, I look out there. I, I, if you're not familiar with TikTok adults, it is a social media platform. Um, it has uh, some controversy going on right now, but for the we won't address that, right? But what we'll say is the creators on it, the kids on it, like, mm -hmm. yeah, there's some stupidity, right? Like, of course, there's always somebody who's like, and I eat a Tide Pod or do some crazy thing. But the creativity, the innovation, the way that they work together collaboratively is astounding. And I see things all the time where I'm like, that is just like amazing and funny mm -hmm. so funny oh my gosh my daughter is so funny she's so funny uh, uh john missed the whole mash keys conversation i'm just continuing this turquoise across the top <laughs> as we just die just i'm uh, sorry digress into as as these lines are distant they should be more horizontal and then you know they can kind of come into the curve as they come closer to us mm -hmm. where we'll start to see the shape of those waves in that ocean and we're just trying to pull forward can you kind of see how those are going now i do oh i really love these 
This is really just a lot of fun for me to do. I, I, I wish, I wish this was like, honestly, sometimes I wish everyone's like power knife all the time because I would be so happy. Well, you could certainly palette knife more often. I need to palette knife more often because it just personally brings me a lot of joy. Now, remember, like in the sunset in the ocean, the lighter, brighter, warmer colors here, the cooler colors going out. Hmm. Right? I'm going to add some white to my mix. As you do. Yep. A nice little, it's still in that turquoise range, right? And I'm not totally mixed, but more thoroughly mixed bead here. Let's come here and start to. And it's like a tap pull. I'm really just trying to express that feeling of maybe a little churning wave. When I'm doing this. Oh, yeah. As I am going. Definitely stronger here. Having so much fun. I really, this is my favorite knife in the set. Yeah. Just, just personally, I, I like, I could probably do most pieces with these two. So I do enjoy this for some weird fussy bit, fussy stuff. Fussy fussing. Fussy fussing. Hi, Mona. Diana Angel says, I'm making a mess with my palette knife. Well, me too. <laughs> They're messy. If you're having a little trouble with the techniques, like if you're having trouble with having a light enough hand mm -hmm. to not be picking up everything underneath, you can dry it with a hair dryer. You really can. Let me get that kind of oceany, ocean, 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 ocean. Does it help to say things? I think so. I think so. Ocean, I think ocean. sound effects help everything. I do too. I've been on a real never ending story kick in my mind lately. Hmm. Like soundtrack, things said, all of that. Interesting. Also, as John is well aware, and Annette Marie kick again because <laughs> the new Kindle came out. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, you know you love a book when you read it through and then you reread it. Mm. Just continuing adding the highlights to the tops of these and kind of pulling that forward. You can kind of see it's like a touch pull, isn't it? Well, Rahil is adamant. If we ever make it over to India, we're going to have to meet up. Oh, dude, I would love to. Mm -hmm. I want to come during Holy. I feel like this is a holiday that I need to see live and in person and not at an American fun run. One. Americans, I don't want to run. That's all it is. I don't want to jog anywhere. Not even for beautiful colored things that go up in the sky. I just, I just want to go. I want to wear white. And I want to get hit with color. And I want to, I don't know, I guess have an eat, pray, love moment. I'm not really mm -hmm. sure. I just want to go have fun. Plus, I'm a vegetarian and I can really handle some curry. And I'm about it. I like get it and I'm about it. And I want to go. I'm so into it. I want to, this is me. I want to go to people's houses. I want to meet families. I want to really like, be there yeah yeah i'm okay but <laughs> we're gonna have to wait to go because there's this pandemic yeah. and it makes travel really challenging so as soon as that's done and we get a vaccine man i'm about it i'm making a much lighter color i'm gonna come in here in just a couple places i want to touch this with this very very light color yeah I'm, i know that we're, we're going to try to get out there to, um, uh, was it, is it in, where is the, is it the, the, the event there? I mean, the, um, space, is it in Mumbai? Uh-huh. Okay. The YouTube space in Mumbai. Cause there's a big, huge YouTube, uh, community in India. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to go to the YouTube space in Mumbai. I want to go up to New Delhi and then kind of go up North in India. There's a bunch of cool stuff up there that I've always wanted to check out. Yeah. Yeah, up in up near um like the Punjab territory. Mm. There's a bunch of like very pretty forests and stuff up there. I'm just up to it. Okay, but the only thing I'm gonna tell you guys right now in India that I'm super, super afraid of is baboons. Like and wild monkeys. 
scare the ever love it monkeys for me are very terrifying mm -hmm. i've watched too many nature shows and i have a list of animals that i actually consider scary and baboons and polar bears are up here even above sharks for me <laughs> baboons and polar bears okay. i just am not i'm so afraid of those two animals in the wild well you know oh and tigers that have parvovirus also scare me. Well, I think any tar tiger would just be... Well, but know. most tigers are, like, not interested in meeting you. Most tigers are like, you can just suck it and go away. But when they have parvovirus, they're no longer afraid of you, and they aren't interested in meeting you. And, and so, and I don't want to know a tiger better. Hmm. Right? I don't want to know a tiger that well. Tigers are scary. Look at that. Do we have some nice little frothy waves afoot now? Some little frothy waves. I'm going to wipe off here. Frothy waves. Frothy waves, frothy waves. Do you We're know what's hiding? To... What? You know what's hiding in the frothy waves? I don't know what's hiding in the frothy waves. Unicorns. <laughs> the last unicorn. I thought That's everybody knew that. Mama Moth's like, I always want to pet a monkey. Monkeys are no joke, man. Mm. Like, they're beautiful. They're beautiful, gorgeous creatures, right? Gorgeous creatures. A chimpanzee can just straight up rip off your face. <sighs> so can just many straight up animals. rip off your so, face. So many yeah, animals. But could... like straight up okay. rip off your face. You have like I'm I... okay. I'm gonna go. I'm putting out some orange here. Um so I've got my yellow and my red and this orange, red orange, and I'm going to take my mid sized diamond and I'm gonna come through and I might get a little red into it. You want kind of what you see going on up in the sky to start happening in the water. We're going to make a series of reflections coming down. Sometimes it's nice to take a few of them out here. You can see the load here. Get that load, and I'm just like touching and pulling. <laughs> Raheel's like giving us all the travel advice, like eat this, don't eat this, go here, go, don't go here. It's great. So, like, oh, I I would awesome. absolutely love to meet uh, all all our Sherpa Sherpets and Sherpazoids and community members in India. It would just be the best. I would love to travel. Very much love to travel. Um, we were actually planning a big family trip, and then uh, which was going to have some community meetup, but then uh, this crazy thing happened, and there we are. Now, on the waves that are kind of maybe at a curve, you can kind of catch capture those where you're like, oh, let's put some light wow. on them. That's just that light just dancing right in there. Just I was yeah. reading the chat and looked back over and was like, oh, it's, No, it's just so much fun. This is really fun. Really fun. You should see the barn I did the other day with like yellow flowers, this gorgeous barn with this like insane cloud that was just like so big. It was like, whoosh, 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 and I was like, <laughs> sorry. John often like comes in. He's like, why are you cackling? <laughs> like I'm not cackling, but I might be cackling. I might be, it might be happening. Let's take some red, some just pure red. And let's also touch out a couple little spots, you know? Sometimes it's nice, by the way, if you've never done this on water, to kind of press up and pull. See this touch where you touch and pull? That's kind of nice, too. That kind of creates some other little textures. You can kind of pull it up and create some little roughness where maybe roughness is required. A little roughness. Now, I'm going to let that have a minute. I'm going to let that have a think, and I'm going to put out some more blue and purple because mm -hmm. I've got to do a couple little details, and then we're going to come back with some yellow. So uh, let's definitely purple it a little bit. It's been so, so years following our trip now. It's like she's a family member. Love you. Thank you. I feel that way about my community. I have known so many people so long that um, their Facebook updates are Facebook updates that I check like I check families. 
So I, I get that. I think that's actually the unique thing about what we do online that's very different mm -hmm. than anything else that you do is that uh, what, I, what I would say is like what's different for me than maybe was true for Bob is that uh, there's less between us. There's more ability to connect with the people that show up than, um, you know, we've ever been able to see before. So it's incredible. So I'm just mixing here. There is some of the white or previous color in there and it actually works in my favor. I'm going to come here and I make kind of a little curve mark. This is the wave. Did I recreate the waves with that dark little curve? Oh, yeah. That's really cool. It is. Those are the little waves that are coming up sort of up close to us that are curving and doing their little dealio. Dealio. All right. There you go. Some little waves. Of the waves. This is cool. Coming really down the center. All right, I'm going to come zoom, zoom over there. Have a Whoosh. corridor of light for sure. A corridor of light. Yeah, on the water. I like to pull in a Boy, corridor of light. That is some textural paint. And this is, this is, you know, this is not expensive paint. No, that's why I use this because it's good paint, but it's not pricey. It lets me be in this moment and not have anxiety about what's happening on my palette. It's happening on my canvas. I'm just painting. It's just nice. You know. It's really rather lovely. Mm-hmm. I like the sunset. This is really turned out neat. It's a lot of fun. More palette knife paintings, please. Yes. Good. Because I love doing them. All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's last some last little touches. Let's get into our white. You can tone it with a little bit of blue, kind of, you know, so it's got sort of that. It's still of the ocean. Those are little frothy bits, right? Ooh, yeah. Rahid. Huh? Rahil asked if you could do this with a moon, and I was like, man, that would oh, be smokingly yeah. cool. It would be. Look, this is fun stuff. Okay, and you don't have to do it in 12 minutes. It's not required. You can take your time. What, I what? would like a moon rise. I'll could even you? get you a reference picture of the actual moon. This is loaded and will fly. <laughs> will fly, but, sir. But I'm will just saying, fly. I'm saying I'm not the only one who could throw knives is what you're saying. <laughs> A little yellow there. I just want some more yellow light down there. No, but you know. sometimes you just get there and you're like, a little more yellow light. Little touches of froth in the sea. That's nice. It is nice. Now you just kind of look and you're like, if there's anything you want to do to brighten it or. This is that time when you can kind of come in and. Really enjoy. And don't forget, you know, sometimes those lights, they go, they go out a bit, don't they? Now, Victoria wanted to know, are you just wiping off the paint on your, on your, um, towel? towel there between strokes there? Yeah. If I have to change out a color in a radical way, or I'm getting too much of this, then it goes into my towel. Um, it, you can also, you know, kind of keep it on your palette, but as you can see, it can get quite mixed and you might not have a need for what happens when you mix all primaries together, you get a gray or brown. Mm. So I might not have a need for essentially that color. That's okay. That's the other reason why sometimes I don't want to use the most expensive paint that I have. Now, I really like that. The only thing I could think I could do to maybe even kick it up even another notch, is perhaps a little...
maybe a little white coming down, also reflecting down the center. I love it. It's good. Guys, I oh, think we got there. Beth, Beth would like to know, can you see the towel? Can she see the towel? Mm -hmm. Put that down on the, or in front of you. Oh, yeah. See, it gets, uh, we just let it dry, and the paint just, it kind of hardens on there. Mm -hmm. And you can use these things for a really long time. I, I don't know. I've had this one for like three years. Yeah. it's. I, I wash it. And then I use it, and I wash it, and I use the, it, and the I paint, wash it, and I use it. The paint doesn't wash out of it, but the dirty water kind of build up. And also, the, it, when you wash it, it softens out, so it stops being like a yeah. stiff little scary rag, and it kind of becomes a soft rag, and then you just use it again and again and again. Mm. And uh, I have several of these around. Um, there, It's just a really good way to do it. And Mark Golden flat out said it's environmentally more sound. The creator of uh, mm -hmm. uh, 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 President of Golden Paint, because when you put the acrylic polymer into the towel instead of into the drain or into the system, once the acrylic paint becomes solid, right, it's fine for it's like very fine for the environment. It's like okay, but when you're putting a lot of stuff into the drains and stuff like that, that's when you worry. So the more you can put into your towel, be it from your brush, be it from your palette knife, the better. Yep. No. Right, letting it solidify and all of that. If you're worried about the environment, you can get a crash, C-R-A-S-H, solids kit. Now, also, if you're uncomfortable using your old towels, if you go to Home Depot or any most auto parts store, they sell something called a box of rags. Mm -hmm. Generally, they're blue or red. Right. Very inexpensive, designed just for this. Do, uh, there was a question, good question, do these colors, right, weed in the, yeah. Dude, wash your paint rags by themselves. Mm -hmm. Paint rags by themselves. Not they're a they're not thing. dangerous in the way like gasoline so clothes are dangerous, but you gotta have all the safety requirements. And they won't do any harm to your washing machine that I've ever experienced. Um, or dryer. Doesn't do any harm. But uh I do tend to wash them alone. You know, definitively. For sure, for, for sure alone. I feel pretty good about this, guys. So Watercolor Wednesday is what is next. Uh, and then we've got another palette knife, a little floral. Then there's the uh, three hoot tentacle dice D and D still. I mean, if you've got a D and D tabletop gaming fan, you've got to, uh, I'm working on a special video that will drop between now and then and starting November 1st, every day we're going to be live for sure. YouTube, maybe YouTube, Facebook, Every, simultaneously, like maybe both of them, and uh, doing fall theme paintings with. I'm I'm gonna try for fantasy uh, kind of theme going on them, or or magical or kind of just an emotional feeling. Uh, I, who knows though? I might find something I'm in love with, and you may end up painting a barn. You know how I am. Mm -hmm. I might be like, I had to paint this barn. I'm sorry. So that happen. may happen. Um, there was certainly a palette knife barn that I did do. If you grabbed it from over there, I could show it to them and they could tell Where, me if they want to it? paint it. It's behind their next next Friday's still life over on the easel. You guys might like it. You might like it. Uh, the barn, no, behind. It's got, no, no, we painted that already on the show. You were there for like three hours. Yeah. Which one do you think is cool? You like the pumpkin? You think the pumpkin is cool? Yeah, I like Man, I had denied the pumpkin. So, uh, oh, I'll just go like this. That's easier. Right. So this is what I'm thinking of putting up. It's it's fall. It's not really fantasy, but it was a lot of fun to do, and I really really liked the clouds. This is next Friday. Here is next Friday. This is what we're going to be doing next Friday. It's just a little, and we'll do it on a small surface. This is just going to be a little one hoot, a uh, little fun, little still life. And then um, the one that John wanted to show you. So sometimes I do a painting and then I go, no. Well, you and, don't have to show it. I like it. No, no, I don't mind. He liked it. So I'll show it. <laughs> this one so I was making a pumpkin. I like it. And I said no. So just know what happens to me too, where I was like, eh, I didn't quite nail it. But it was interesting. Like it, it was interesting. Now, do you want to take them on an up close tour? Do I? Up close <laughs> tour of the surface? Boing. All right. 
Remember to wash so your palette knives I'm out with soap and wire and lay them to dry. This space right through here, how thick this really, like that sun, super thick. We can go down there, like you could jump off the edge of it. Here we go. I'm like leaning and like I'm going to see it better somehow from the screen. I'm like right here at the canvas. You can see how that is. Oh, they're loving that. <laughs> Moderator Verdian's like, I like the pumpkin. I like you too, Moderator Verdian. Oh my gosh, we totally have to dish about what's going on with Glow. So, um, what are you talking about? Uh, please do the Oya Princess, uh, Rahil. Oh no, she's she's going to be back up. She'll be back up next you week do those, in like, there. Once a she, week? Once a week, we'll work on her. So we've got another segment. We're going to start painting her in. So she mm -hmm. goes during the week. We just paint her weekly. I just don't have her scheduled yet. So this is where we're at. This I will get an Oya Princess back up can for I you guys. You, hmm? How do you sign this thing? Um, so I would wait till it entirely dried, and I would use like me personally. I would use a fluid acrylic, and I would use a fine monogram liner, and I would mm. sign it when it was totally dry. Um, some people feel very strongly that you should sign abstracts. Not at all are on the back. I feel like a fly fell into the paint. What? Can you zoom in on that? Is that a fly? I don't know. Do, 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 do. Hold on. Me Help me. I think I need the zoom. All right. What is this? Is, I think somebody like ended their little existence. Mm, hold on. Let me focus on that. Oh, it, what it's, is that? It's maybe feather. Hold on. Stay there. I'm focus. It looks like feather. Whatever it is, it had to That's go. That's a feather. That was feather piece, not animal piece. Looks like maybe dust bite. But it right. didn't have head or legs or i'm sorry body. it just was like really bugging me and i wasn't sure and okay. i just had to know because there's these little bugs that like my coffee so this is when you realize that you're old enough to have myopia but also old enough to have a really cool camera with exceptional zoom so you don't worry about it <laughs> so, so polinary if you look at the if you look in the videos if you go to the video tab here on the youtube channel you will see a big art quest fairy tale oya um, and she is a really gorgeous elemental, uh, probably the basis for Storm on X-Men that we are painting. Uh, last class, you would be really easy to catch, catch up if you're hearing me now and you're like, I would like to do a portrait. Mm -hmm. If you want to work on dark skin tones, if you want to work on portraits, if you want to kind of like get into something that's a little more deep involved, multi-classes, she's there. We've only done the grid. And I showed you guys to learn how to recognize skin tones using a reference in custom mix as you go. So part two, we'll be taking that knowledge of the skin tones that we worked on and putting them into the portrait. And then a, and a lot of fur and metal work. It's going to be a minute. It'll be a few, but you could really easily catch up right now. If you wanted to be live with us uh, next week, you could get that done real quick and be ready for next week's live. And I'm going to change her thumbnail. Um, as uh, like probably this week. So you can see that, that she was part one and then part two is coming. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what we do Get with me guys. Unless it's not good for you then don't do it. All right. Be good to yourself. <laughs> Crazy out there. Be good to each other. Cause we're all going through it together. And I want to see you in a easel really soon. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. What the? You should zoom in. When oh, I was, out. they're telling me to zoom in. I'm going to zoom in. Okay, hold on a second. So we're not really live anymore. You guys can go. But I'm just going to zoom in so she can see it. Everybody wants a pumpkin. Yeah, shh. We're still live. I'm not supposed to be here anymore. You guys can go home now. It's okay. We're already home. I forgot. We're like in lockdown. You guys can't go anywhere. So, okay. There it is. Bye-bye, guys.